Hi, this is Kirk Maston from Maston Labs, and this is a practical camera review of the Leica CM Point and Shoot. This camera was incredibly hard to find. I looked for over a year to find a good copy of it. It wasn't made very long by Leica, and now I see why. I'm gonna give you a brief overview of what I like about it and what I don't like about it, and you can decide for yourself. Um, so the reason that I bought it was that I'm really into point and shoot cameras. I think you can do really great stuff with them. And I was looking for a point and shoot camera that would let me get a really good portrait. I'm really into portraits. So I was trying to find one that had a really, really fast aperture. And most point and shoot cameras kind of max out at 2.8. So f2.8 is about as good as you can do. And most point and shoots are a 35 millimeter lens, meaning that they're a little bit wide. Uh, what's really cool about this camera, I mean, the whole reason that I even considered it is that it's got a 40 millimeter 2.4 lens on it. So what that means is that you can use it in a practical sense for portraits, like good portraits. You can have a portrait making machine in your pocket basically, and that's why I liked it. Uh, other really good things about it is that it's got a, a protective uh, lens cover that goes over when you, when you open it, so it's pretty quick to use. You can slip it out of your pocket and just put, pull this button and the lens pops out and you're ready to shoot. Uh, it's also super, super quiet. So I don't even know if you'll be able to hear it. So this is the sound of it focusing, which is really, really quiet compared to any other point shoot I have. And when you take a picture, it's really quiet too. So you can barely hear it. You can hear a little bit of the rewind motor, but it's really quiet. This is a great camera for street photography and a great camera for taking candids, you know, fairly close to people without them noticing. Um, so those are the really good things about it. Uh, you can also uh, manually set the aperture. So if you wanted to just shoot in at 2.4 or, or f4 or whatever, you can just you can easily switch to that with this knob here. And this camera also lets you manually focus like you would with a larger camera in a kind of a weird roundabout way. So you can turn this dial while your eye is up to the camera. And when it's in focus, a little red light will appear. So it, that's kind of cool if you wanted to focus on something in particular and wait for the decisive moment um, until you take your picture. Uh, you, can, you can get the focus all dialed in and everything else dialed in and then take your picture. Now, let's get to the downsides of this camera. Who would think that Leica would make such a cool concept you know, camera like this and make such big mistakes? Let me go through them. So yeah, the lens is awesome, right? But it takes like a hundred years for it to pop out of the out of the camera. So as far as like that decisive moment is concerned, um, it's not really that decisive unless you're like psychic or you want to carry your camera around open like this. Uh, the other thing is that the viewfinder was made, I don't know, by someone who's never made a viewfinder before because it's like looking through a straw. It's like a very small viewfinder. So you have no sense of the space you're in. So unlike a like a, a Leica M6, like their classic rangefinder where you really can see everything and know what's coming into the frame, this is like trying to shoot a really careful picture while looking through like a little straw and like pointing it around. So the viewfinder is terrible. Um, and to keep bagging on this camera, uh, the menu on the back is like totally impossible to use. So I feel like whenever Leica went into um, you know, anything that was beyond the manual, beautiful camera, like their M series, they kind of just really didn't know what they're doing because this menu is impossible to use. Um, there's no clear way to really like lock in your settings. So every time you, you open the camera, you've got to reset everything. So if you don't want the flash to fire, you got to get that set up. If you want exposure compensation, you got to set that up each time. Um, so there are some issues with it. Um, the other thing too is that so this is supposed to be a point and shoot camera that you have in your pocket for whenever, like you're out on the street. Probably two out of three times that I pull this out of my pocket, this knob gets turned and all of a sudden I'm shooting like at manual focus without realizing it. So I'll pull it out of my pocket to get the decisive moment and I'm shooting it like two feet away and my subject's like five feet away and it's out of focus. So that's definitely no good. Um, so all those bad things aside, one reason I would still consider using this camera 
is that if you wanted just a small little camera in a bag where you could just stop and like take a well thought out portrait or just like one picture, um, this is a great camera. But I think it was meant to be a street photographer's camera and in that sense it fails. I mean, it's just gonna be all jacked up. Like you take it out of your pocket, it's at the wrong focus. Uh, it takes like 10 years for the lens to come out. Um, there's many issues. So overall, I give this kind of a eh, mediocre rating. It's good if you know what you want to do with it, but otherwise I would steer clear and get something like the Fuji Class S, which I will talk about in another review, which you can't miss. Um, if you want to learn more, go to massonlabs.com forward slash blog. I've got more information about this camera and other film cameras. And you can also learn about my hybrid uh, film emulation presets for Lightroom and Photoshop. And these presets will help you seamlessly match your digital and film images together. You will be amazed. Thank you.